Hello out there, my knife-loving friends. As usual, it's been a long time since I've done a video. I definitely have been spacing them further and further apart as time has gone on. For one reason or another, I'm not even sure. So, here I am. I'm back. Today I've got something for you that uh, is pretty special. At least, in my opinion, it's pretty special. There have been numerous videos on the knife already in its basic format and uh, at least one really, really cool format um, that Jim Skelton got a hold of early on. Um, and that's a browse reloader. But this is not a standard browse reloader, nor is it one of Jason Swanoff's. It is a pimped, fully modified browse reloader by a guy named Eric and his business name, I'm going to put a link to it in the video description, but uh, his business name is Shepherd Concealed Carry or Shepherd Custom Concealment, sorry, uh, Shepherd Custom Concealment. And I believe if you go to his webpage, after searching for that, it says Shepherd Custom Creations. Um, really cool guy, guy does excellent work. So let's get into the knife without further ado. All right, so right off the bat, you can see the uh, scales. This is red lightning strike carbon fiber. This is the first time that I've had any real lightning strike carbon fiber in the collection for one reason or another. It didn't interest me in its basic form, but red and blue and all these crazy colors they're coming out with, certainly it is neat. Now you'll notice it's got sculpting on it, just like the original scales. Similar, I should say, to the original scales. The sculpting is all done in the same spots as the original scales, but there are some differences, subtle curvature differences and whatnot. There you see the spine, there's the browse blades on the spine that we're all familiar with. You can see the centering is perfect. And the clip doesn't have the Urban Tactical logo. It's just been a stone wash finished. See the other opposite scale there, you can see all the sculpting. I mean, other than that, everything's on this, you know, scale wise, I mean, it's got, probably got the same handle feel. All right, and this originally was satin finished, plain Jane G10 model, but uh, Eric acid washed it himself. It's a little lighter than a, the normal acid wash that Jason does. There's that distinct um, D10 ball track that everybody hates. I don't really mind it. Pretty neat. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to... Yeah, there it is. I'll try to get this for you guys. When he did the acid wash, I mean you could see by the spine section where it said browse that uh, Yeah, that's going to be tough. Okay, maybe I won't be able to get it. Anyways, you can see the area where the number of the knife is still present. This is number 480 of 500. So anyways, oh, didn't mention other modification besides the handle scales and the the acid wash. He mirror finished the blade, or I should say, I'm sorry, he, he mirror finished the edge. If I can move that along, you kind of see the reflection of the camera running down the, the blade there. Both sides. Anyways, he did a fantastic job. So, besides the fact that this one's beautiful, um, I, I didn't get a Jason Browse one-off um, for two reasons. Uh, one, because a little cost restrictive, price uh, prohibitive for me lately. I mean, you know, I, I guess I could work some overtime and save the funds for it or whatever, but I was converting all my overtime into extra time off so I could take a big vacation. Uh, yeah, you know, prioritization and whatnot. 
Um, plus, I hadn't seen one with this material. Now, his, his one-offs, they go for between six and 700, and there were a variety of handle materials available. Uh, Jim Skelton, early on, he had uh, reviewed one with SeaTech, and that was really neat, and I guess Jason got a huge jump in demand for SeaTech handles after that. Now, there was a red SeaTech handle that was pretty neat as well, and I like the color colors red and black, um, just because they're attractive, and, and this has that red and black in spades, and it's got a nice nice variety of contrast, a nice variety of playing with the light. Uh, I really enjoy that, and you know, unfortunately my camera and my lighting conditions here in this room, they won't capture it to its full effect, but it's gorgeous. Now, uh, Eric, he, um, in his photographs, was able to show that in a way that made me want this knife. So we cut a deal. I made a trade, and now here it is. I've got, I mean, he, uh, he of course, shipped, uh, you know, you guys are all used to seeing these by now, the, the Browse Hard case. I've got the original scales for it, but are they going to go back on this knife? No, I don't think so. So anyways, design-wise, let's talk about the design. Now that the aesthetics are out of the way, uh, why did I want this knife in the first place to add to my my tactical um, uh, defense or backup defense um, part of the collection? It it feels so great in the hand. You know, it has the the expert design um, elements that Mikkel Willemsen of Denmark is famous for. And you guys, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know I reviewed a uh, I reviewed a Camp Willemsen Commander, custom Camp Willemsen Commander years ago. I don't know how many years ago that was, but beautiful knife. Great, gorgeous. Uh, I got a good deal on that one and moved it along like I do. But, you know, the, the handle is just amazing. I mean, it doesn't look like it. It's based on his Parak model. You know, it goes from, you get a nice finger, finger groove right here. And it's nice and fat. You got some really, really heavy jimping, which some people don't like, but I actually, I actually favor it. The backspacer has some heavy jimping on it. You know, that's another thing he does a lot of. Um, subtle curvature here, and it gets thinner. It tapers, and then there's a thumb shelf for reverse grip, which I'll show you in a minute. But anyways, at least for my hand, and I imagine anybody with, with small to medium sized hands, this fits like a glove. It feels great. You know, if you're into using a, a saber type grip or a Filipino type grip, you can you can run your thumb up along here. Good, great purchase. If you want to do a hammer grip, it feels really good, really locked in. Feels like this knife isn't going anywhere. And the the flipper and its and its uh, capacity to provide a finger guard or a lower finger guard here is amazing on this particular knife. It's really deep feels great. So anyways, in the hammer grip, it's great. In the reverse grip, like I said, you have a great thumb shelf here. Nice contour, nice feel overall. Just feels wonderful. There's nothing about this knife that I despise or outright wouldn't want, except maybe for the detent ball track that everybody talked so much about when these were being developed or right before they came out, I guess, in the prototype phase. Um, the lockup is great. Nothing, you know, there's nothing different here than any other reloader that's out there. The lockup is great, the centering is great, the action is great. Okay, I like the shallow recurve. I like that there's, there's also a slight curvature to the handle. So, you guys have seen from other videos that I've done, it keeps, your, keeps the point more aligned for a thrust uh, as far as the anatomy or the structure of your arm, you know, moving forward rather than having to pronate the wrist. So, it's pretty cool. Um, you know, like I said, action smooth. Nothing different than a standard browse reloader in that respect. Feels great, locks up solid every time. 
The weight's not prohibitive. The feel in hand is great. It's a wonderful knife. And I would like to highly recommend Eric's handle scale work and his, his sharpening work, his uh, blade finish work. Just as a, as a knife pimper in general, the centering is great. I mean, he did a great job. You know, if it wasn't listed on Jason's one-off page, it could easily pass. I mean, it's it's that good. Now, uh, I've never purchased a knife directly from Jason Browse, but, you know, he sent me swag anyways. Business card, glow-in-the-dark stickers, regular sticker. And then I've got another sticker that's on my uh, one of my knife cases where I keep my collection. Um, no, that was really nice of him. I mean, I, I did purchase a, uh, a T4 from GP Knives. Um, that's a that's a great knife too that I'm going to do a review of, and uh, so you guys will see that pretty soon. And that one I haven't had pimped. I haven't had anything done to it. I like the standard T4 more than any of the one-offs, and I'll explain that. Tactical perspective. You guys will understand when I when I describe it. So, for short knife, blade being under four inches with that shallow recurve or negative blade angle, negative alignment with the wrist, um, you've got a, a heavy geometric tanto point, and it's 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 nicely angulated, so the, and with the switch here, it provides a good point, so it's going to have good penetration. Slashing-wise, having that neg negative blade angle, um, it's going to cut deep. So as far as uh, defensive use or tactical use of this blade, it's a winner. It's a win-win. So in this particular knife, um, I, I got a win-win as far as how attractive it is. Uh, a win-win for its carryability and its presentation. I didn't show you guys in the pocket. But does have a deep, deep right pocket clip. It, you know, obviously it disappears in the pocket. Okay, fine. I, I don't really care if it's a deep carry as long, as long as I can get my my hand behind it. I like to use the middle finger, okay, to snag the clip. I like to use the index finger to get near the flipper so when it clears the pocket, I can go right into the right into the uh, the deployment of the blade with the index finger, so, you know, that's it. Great carryability, great deployment, great everything. I don't know what else I could say. I could say, keep an eye out for the Browse T4 video. Now, if you guys don't like Jason Browse, you know, skip this one, skip the next one. I'm going to do the Browse T4 next. Um, that's it. I thank you all for watching. Thank you for sticking with me. Hopefully none of you have uh, quit watching my videos. Uh, hopefully this would reignite the idea of watching them if, you, uh, if you're still subscribed. All right. Have a good day out there, Knife World, and we'll catch you later.